are um, on our second Sunday of this series um, that we are um, calling Soul Care. And I don't know uh, if the soul is something that feels mysterious to you um, or not, but it, it, there's a little bit of a mystery to the soul um, of, of us as beings, but it's that part of us that will live forever. It's the part of us that is eternal. And uh, it's really probably more of who we are than anything else about us. And, uh, and today I'm going to talk about seasons of the soul. And I want to go back to our kind of our, our ground zero for the series is Psalm 1. And so I want us to go back to Psalm 1. And uh, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor one more time on this and that is for us all to stand to our feet and read this together if we can put psalm 1 up on the uh, screen we'll uh we'll go through this together and so let's go ahead and get started with it blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers but whose delight is in the law of the lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season. Let's just pause there a second. You didn't see the word season, right? Okay, now I'm just, yeah, that's where I got the, got the season thing from is right there, okay? Uh, his fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. Just stay standing, if you would, for just a moment. And uh, I'm going to ask us to, uh, actually, we're going to move to another passage of Scripture. And, and I want to tell you, we're, we're looking at a pretty small little piece of this today. Uh, in this issue of seasons. And, uh, and so uh, we have two more Sundays. We're going to look at every verse in this psalm, okay? We're going we're gonna to look at it all. So don't be concerned if you feel like I'm not getting to all of it. We're going to get there. But I want us to uh, move over to Ecclesiastes chapter uh, 3, if we could. And uh, we're going to read this together too. And this, is, uh, this has to do with the season thing, okay? And uh, there's a time for everything. Let's read together. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. Now, let me just stop. Most of you are already familiar with this verse, these, these verses. You've heard it sometime or you've heard people refer to it or whatever, and you kind of know some of the stuff coming. I was thinking as I was going over this, I was thinking about weddings that I've, uh, I, I can't remember whose it was. It's probably a good thing. But I had said to the, to the, the, the groom, I had said, um, repeat after me, and we were starting to repeat it, and I said, for better, for worse. And they said, for better, and stopped. And I said, no, you have to say, for worse. <laughs> you know, I mean, I actually just said, you still need to say, for worse. And they, they had just gotten, like, stuck in what it was. They weren't trying to not get, to get out of it. They just were stuck. And so, uh, but I will say, sometimes when you read through a list like this, you're going, can I do the one and not the other? You know, can I, can, I, can I have a time to be born? But what about the die thing, you know? But so some of the things in here are, are fun, easy. Some of them are seasons we like and some of them not so much. So a time to be born, a time to die. Let's go ahead. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. Can I push the break right for a moment? If you've moved any time in the last, you know, three years, don't you wish you'd done, been the person who threw everything away instead of like, oh, why aren't we keeping all this stuff anyway? Um, that one I think is very appropriate for, uh, for those who are hoarders and those 
you know, other people are like just, hey, if it's not useful, throw it out. My older daughter, she's, she's definitely good at that. She, she'll buy something three weeks later, she sells it online or whatever, you know, like she doesn't keep too much. Let's go on. Um, a time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. I don't have time to get into that, but we'll talk about it some other day, okay? This hate thing. Uh, a time for war and a time for peace. What do workers gain from their toil? I have seen the burden God has laid on the human race. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart, yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. Let's pray. You can be seated. Lord Jesus, uh, we know that we, our life is filled with seasons, just in the same sense that our weather patterns are laid out in seasons. Uh, we experience that in our lives as well. And Lord, we have seasons of the soul that um, are seasons that we relish, we love, we enjoy. And there are some seasons of the soul that are hard, that are difficult, that are um, not so fun. And I'm asking, Lord, that today that we'll, we'll take an honest look at our, our soul, the condition of our soul, and also even just the uh, awareness of maybe where we are right now seasonally in our soul. Because sometimes just having that awareness helps us in that season to embrace the season instead of running from it or trying to jump to another season prematurely. And I pray, Lord, today that you'll guide my words as we try to explain things that I think uh, are reflective of what your word teaches about this idea of seasons in our lives. And we'll thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to just lay out for us at the outset here um, kind of a, a little description of the four seasons that we're familiar with, and we're going to stick with those four seasons and uh, just talk a little bit, just briefly, kind of as a, a, a prelude to uh, some application here of the seasons. Um, and, and I want to, in doing that, first of all, just look with me. If you, you you don't have a sheet there in front of you, but they can maybe pull it up on the, on the, on the screen for you, verse 3, because verse 3 is in, in Psalm 1 is kind of the heart of the season thing. And so it says this, and he shall be like a tree, and I'm reading from the uh, Amplified here this morning, which you see on the screen is, is, uh, is actually uh, NIV. I'm reading for the Amplified, so it expands it out just a little bit. And he shall be like a tree firmly planted. And remember, the person that's being talked about in verses 1 and 2 is being compared to a tree. This is not really a lesson about trees, but it's since we know about trees and we're aware, the writer is saying, listen, if you want to know what this person is like, I'm going to explain it to you by describing a tree. And what kind of tree? It's, we don't know the type of tree, but it's a tree firmly planted. In other words, it was intentionally put in a place. And what was that place? By the streams of water, ready to bring forth its fruit in its season, its leaf also shall not fade or wither, and everything he does shall prosper. And that word prosper, sometimes we think it means that he'll get rich. And maybe that is, maybe that would be true. But what the word prosper here really is best described as coming to full maturity. In other words, living out the purpose that God had designed that tree for, it lived up to its potential. It, 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 it bore out the purpose for what it was there for. And, uh, and, and I, I believe if there's anything God wants for all of us is he has built into us the, the capability of being something and, and doing certain things and contributing in certain ways to life and to people. And he's given us a unique capacity to be the person who will be that to some people and no one else may be that. You know, if you're a father... Uh, God's given you a unique role to fulfill that role as a father to your children. If you're a, a wife, God's given you that unique role to fulfill that with your spouse. And, uh, and so there are a lot of very specific purposes that we have in life that God said, you're the one. This is for you. 
And uh, this tree that is talked about here lived up to its full potential. It came to full maturity. Have you ever been reminded before that you have a lot of maturing to do, a lot of prospering to do in your life, a lot of growing up to do? Um, I'm going to tell on myself here, and I think I maybe have told this story one other time, and I don't remember if it was Sunday morning or not, so I'm going to go ahead and tell you on Sunday morning. Um, I, I, would, I, I would like to say at this stage in my life that, you know, I've grown to a certain level of maturity, but there are things that happen along the way that sometimes reveal I've still got some growing up to do. And, uh, and, and in fact, it happens probably a little more often than I would like. But this was a situation where uh, it was Christmas time, and uh, Vanjie's uh, sister and parents were here about two or three years ago. And uh, Vanjie and her sister were over here in Evans at the Kroger. Hunter and I were out running some errands, doing something, and uh, we happened to see them in the parking lot there, so we kind of pulled up behind where they were parked, and we were talking to them in, in the parking lot. I wasn't parked. I was in the, in the lane behind them. And a truck backed out facing me, and when the gentleman, he was a couple of car lengths out ahead of me, when he started coming my direction, he started making all kinds of motions to me with his hands. And uh, I thought he was trying to tell me, get out of his way. And that's what I thought he was trying to tell me. So in my great maturity, I thought up something to say to him when he pulled up by me that would reveal just how wise I really am. So... And over here at the side door where Hunter was, Vanjie's starting to go, Rod, I think she was smelling something coming up. And she's going, Rod, Rod, Rod. And I'm just totally ignoring her completely. And so the guy pulls up there beside me, had his window down, I had my idea. And I, just as kindly as I knew how to say it, I said, have you always wanted to be a traffic cop? <laughs> now, the smile on his face disappeared real quickly. And I can't remember everything he said, probably a good thing, but something about a smart something. And, uh, and then drove on. And this is, he pulls away. Vanjie says, Rod, there was a car about to back into you. And he was trying to tell you that you're about ready to be hit. You know how big I felt? <laughs> I mean, about that big. So to this day, We'll be driving along someplace and someone will kind of make some motions with their hands. Some Hunter will say, you're going to tell him I always want to be a traffic cop? <laughs> so he, it gets thrown up to me regularly. So what I'm deeply aware of is how flawed I am and just how easily I can get off track and not be what it is that God wants me to be in a given situation. So, so I, I'll tell you if, you, you know, if you're ever thinking, man, I'm just never going to get there, just say, well, at least, at least I'm farther up the road than uh, Rod is, you know? And, uh, and, and so this maturity thing, this growing up, this being who we ought to be, is part of what makes that happen is this thing called seasons. Now, I'm going to talk about winter first, okay? Let's just, and, and you can, if you want to write something down, I'm not, it's not really like an outline um, this is more of, more of me just talking to you about these concepts, but if you do, you can take an insert from the bulletin that you don't need for something else and maybe jot on that. But winter is a time when things seem barren. I mean, in a sense, they are barren. But, but you look at it and you go, well, that tree is barren. That tree, there's, you know, it's just a, it's just a bunch of limbs and twigs and everything else, and there doesn't, there, 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 you can't see life. It's barren. And winter in the season of our soul is real. And, and, and there are time periods when you don't visually see much life. It, it kind of looks dead. Kind of gives the appearance of being dead. There's no visual progress going on. There's nothing that somebody would look at and go, wow, that's a really prosperous tree right there. Or that's a really, you know, uh, that's, a, that's a fruitful tree. It's just a bunch of twigs and limbs and stuff. But on the inside of that tree, internally, a tree that even is sticks and limbs and that kind of stuff is also internally being fed and nourished, getting healthy, being healthy, and re restoration has taken place, even though it looks like nothing's going on. 
internally there is something still going on. Now, we're going to come back to winter in a few minutes in kind of an application time. I'm going to go through the rest of the seasons quickly, kind of give them a picture of what springtime. This season is a time for new things to happen. I mean, I think all of us like it when something new happens. Whenever we, you know, isn't it interesting how you get something new and it's really exciting? I, I mean, I can remember when Skylar was just real small, and I remember going to the dollar store with her one day, and uh, and and she every everything she saw in there, she was like, "Oh, that's so nice," and she was just expressive about everything. And I thought, "Wow, this is going to be easy." She's super impressed at the dollar store. So this is I'm gonna this, I'm gonna get by cheaper with this kid than any kid I've ever had. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna this is gonna work out. The problem that I found with those new things from Dollar Tree or Dollar Store, whatever I mean, whatever you know you could get for a dollar, that were, they looked so cool and they're so excited. You were really fortunate if you made it home before it broke. I mean, I mean, so you you maybe only paid a dollar, but it's a quick use. I mean, it's like boom, you know, and it's like it's gone, and 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 so. But there's something, even if it's something that breaks within the hour or within the day, it's still exciting when something's new. We love new stuff, you know, and, I, and I'm always amazed, you know, if you ever buy a brand new car, not recommending that you do that, but if you do buy a brand new car, I mean, you look how sleek and slick the paint is and everything. And then you have a situation like yesterday, you know, that big rain that dropped out later in the day yesterday, I was sitting in a parking lot waiting for it to let up a little bit. And I, I, I was, you know, sending a text or doing something. So I wasn't looking around. But some guy pulled him beside me, opened his door, and bam, you know, whacked the side of my truck. And uh, I kind of jolted around. And, and he was kind of a small guy. And so he looked, he looked right in my window at me, like scared to death, you know, like, oh, my goodness, you know, what, what are you going to do? And I said, I said, did it do anything? He goes, I can't see that it did. I said, well, it's an old work truck anyway. Go ahead. You know, just go on in. And uh and, but, but, you know, but I would tell you, if that was a 2020 pickup truck sitting there, well, I probably wouldn't have parked there, okay? I just wouldn't have taken that chance, all right? Because, but, because so, but there's something, when something's new, man, it's, it's, oh, we love it. There's something so nice about it. It's just unfortunate it doesn't stay that way. But it's, spring is when surprises happen, you know, new life is popping up, uh, birds are singing, surprises happen. You see visual progress going on. Your yard's starting to grow again, you're going to have to mow, you know? And uh, it's, even though you like to see the growth, you're going, oh, man, I wish it would have just like, waited a couple more weeks or something. Um, visual progress, signs of life are everywhere. Growth becomes obvious. You can't miss it. Springtime, growth is happening. And, and so when we apply that into our own lives, we have those seasons where it's like, and we're just growing. We're growing. We're, we're, we're doing well. We're, we can just tell it. We can feel it. Other people can see it. It's obvious. Then there's summer. And summer is just wonderful. I mean, I know it gets a little hot in Georgia, but it's wonderful, okay? Lots of sunshine and warmth. Leaves are plentiful. Blossoms are becoming fruit. Lots of activity taking place. A playground for squirrels, a tree here that's planted by this, you know, it's coming alive. Squirrels playing in it, birds nesting in it. I mean, it's just a, it's a hive of life and activity. It's a lot of fun. And, uh, and, and, and it's sort of like life is good, you know. And you hear people say, I heard somebody this past week tell me, now I'm going to be doing this for so many more years, and then I'm going to put my toes in the sand. You know what they meant. I mean, the, the living Z's, they were, they were planning on going, I'm going to retire all this what rat race I'm in, and I'm going to find myself a place at the beach, and I'm going to park myself, and I'm going to stick my feet in the sand. Now, I hope they, you know, hope they make that. and hope that's. But what they'll also find is that, you know, winter comes too. You know, winter also comes. And then fall. Um, beautiful colored leaves. Beautiful colored leaves. And I'm going to ask you guys, don't take five weekends this fall and go to the, go to the mountains, okay? No, I'm just, I mean, you know, it's a, I have pastors, I, I have a lot of pastor friends, and they're going, oh, no, the leaves are turning color. Everybody's going to the mountains. It's, you know, nobody's going to be here this weekend and that stuff. So, uh, so we, like, we like the beautiful colored leaves. The fruit has been harvest, harvested. Um, coolness is in the air. 
But there's also this thing called a transition that's underfoot and fall. Because you know what fall means? Winter is coming. And you may like winter. Georgia's pretty easy to like. You may like winter. But the truth is, winter is a little harsher. It's a little different kind of season. Now, here's what I want to say to you about these seasons of the soul. These various, they're not like the weather pattern. They don't always come neatly packaged. In other words, you might actually have a few days of winter and a few days of summer in a given week. Now, if you have that every week, there's a term for that, but I won't mention it here. Um, it's a psychological term, but anyway, all right. And, and so, you know, you, you, you don't want to necessarily have that every week. But the, tr but the fact is that, that we come and go from seasons a little bit quicker on the human side and the soul side of our being than we do necessarily in the sense of the weather patterns. And they're not quite, even though weather's not predictable, fall, spring, and summer, winter, those are predictable. We have dates even set, even though sometimes in Georgia, you know, you're going... I, I'm always hoping when it hits the middle of September and that, and they say it's fall, that means the hot weather goes away. But it doesn't always do it, does it? So we set the date, but it doesn't always cooperate with us. And so sometimes we have a little extra summer or a little extra this or a little extra that. But, the, but, but we go ahead and we set the dates. They're there. and say, this is when this starts. You're not going to be able to predict that so much in the patterns of your soul seasons. So... What is it, if you're like this tree, if you're like this tree that is planted, that does bring forth its fruit in season, in other words, it does have some predictability, there is, is going to be a time period, there's going to be a season when there's going to be a producing of fruit, and it's because it went through the other seasons appropriately in order to produce that fruit. What stays the same through the seasons for us and for, this, for the tree, reflection off of the tree uh, analogy? First of all, the location. It's planted by the river. It's planted, it's positioned by the river. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you that it is very, very important for us to plant ourselves in the most advantageous way in the relationship that we have with God. And, and because if you don't plant yourself in that relationship, you receive Christ as your savior, you accept his forgiveness in your life. And what you do is you position yourself. We talked about this internal growth thing last Sunday, and you can go back and get that if you want, uh, to, if, you, if, if you need, you know, if you missed it or need more information, I'm not gonna rehearse it again today. But the truth of the matter is, if you place yourself in that position, then you are continually getting the nutrients and the care that you need to develop to be strong through the seasons of life. So the location stays the same. The seasons change. The spring brings some, some bad weather and some storms. The winter brings some severity. Uh, the, the, the summer brings a time of plenty and, and, and the, fall bring, the fall brings a time of harvest for it. But that tree stays right where it is. You said that sounds boring. I'm not saying that you can't move around, you can't move around the world or anything else, but your soul, what is your soul vested in? Where have you given, where have you bought into, say, this is where my soul rests? Where have I planted my soul and in my spiritual life? And it's in, in, in the best place, in the presence of God, and the practices that will keep me in that, in that. The second one is nutrition. Because it's planted there, that tree is gonna keep getting water and soil, good water and good soil, all through all the seasons. So what are you feeding on? What are you like bringing into your mind? What are you bringing into your heart? What are you bringing into your mind? What are you nurturing your soul with? I can just promise you that if you live your whole world, your whole week in a Jerry Springer kind of world, and I just use him as an example because you, I think, you know, even if he's not, I don't know if he's still out there or not, but he, I mean, I'm sure he's alive, but I'm saying, I don't know if he's still doing what he was doing. But, but if, you, if, if, if you immerse yourself in that kind of world, that kind of thinking, that kind of just, just kind of what I call, uh, it's not even really even junk food, it's just junk, you know, that kind of junk in your life, 
you don't expect. Don't expect yourself to be nourished. Don't expect whenever winter comes that you're going to be strong and stable. Don't expect whenever even the harvest comes that you're going to have any good harvest. There's, it's, it's, you're going to live kind of a fruitless life. You're going to be like the three, cha- three verses in this chapter, like the chaff which the wind drives away, and ultimately a time of destruction. What else should stay the same through the seasons? Your location, your nutrition, your identity. What's planted by the river water? A tree. A tree. I know you're not a tree, but are you a child of God? Do you know that you're a child of God? Do you know that you belong to him? That you're anchored into the reality of your salvation and the, and, and the gospel that, that Jesus came and so clearly gave to us? Are you anchored in your identity as a believer, as one who follows Jesus, a follower of Jesus? Are you anchored in that? Do you know who you are? This tree, you know, if it was an apple tree, it's not producing acorns. If it was an acorn tree, it's not producing apples. That tree was true to itself, true to who its identity was. What is your identity? Who is your identity in? Is your identity just wrapped up in yourself? Is your identity wrapped up in something else or some, you know, some well-known figure or politics or something else? Or is your Is your identity wrapped up in who Jesus is? And your identity is a child of God. The fourth one is, uh, it stays the same through the seasons, is your ability. Your ability. The tree didn't have leaves during the winter, has little buds and stuff during the spring, has great leaves during the summer, then they all fall off in the fall. Looked very different, looks very different. But the tree, the tree's ability is to stand strong, to be stable. Stable in the winter when the ice covers its branches, when the snow lands on it. Strong in the spring when the buds start coming. Strong in the summer whenever the leaves and the fruit start developing. Strong in the fall whenever it starts shedding off everything. Strong. Its its roots were deep in the ground. Its trunk was stable. Its branches were connected to that trunk, made it strong. And so whenever we have planted ourselves in the reality of God's presence and his power and his word, when we feed continually on that, day and night, as the scripture says in Psalm 1. When we realize who we are in him, we're not confused about our identity. We are strong then through the winters. It's easier to be strong in the summer because we feel good. I mean, if you're, if you're in a soul summertime, you know, you might be skipping and hopping and, you know, making other people miserable. But uh, you're just, you know, it's, it's good. Now, it's interesting. Tom, you mentioned uh, the breakfast yesterday, and I'm going to mention it too, because uh, I, I, will have, I will have to tell you, I, I'm actually glad that most of you didn't, you know, several of you didn't come. Because it, di- I, mean, I, I mean, I wish you'd have been there, but I will tell you, it, this, I wouldn't trade the time. We, I, I, feel like, I, I feel like Tom I feel like I was there with the sages, okay? I know my hair is gray, so that means I must be a sage too, but um, I felt like I was there with the sages as well. This was an awesome time. And awesome sharing and conversation. But here was, we had a theme. Charlie gave us a theme. Walk through it well. You know, what is, what kind of cracked me up, Charlie? I got back to my notes later on. I, I, did, I didn't strike me during that time, but I got back to my notes later on, and the phrase that I used for this next set right here was this, how to walk well through winter in these different seasons. So I think God wants us to hear something here at Westtown about walking through things well. You're going through something? Here's what God says to us, walk through it well. You're going through a hard time. You're going through a difficult time. You're going through a good time. What, you, know, you, can, you know, good times can also cause you to be careless. Walk through it well. So I really 
grabbed my attention when I'm going, that is in my notes. I can't believe it. And, uh, and, and so here's what we're going to talk about, how to walk well through winter. This is kind of wrap it into the application here of what these seasons are. First of all, winter can be harsh. It's a time when people may face depression, even some despondency in their lives. But you remember who you are. You remember where you are. You remember what you're taking in and you be strong. And here's what I want you also to remember. Remember that winter is a season it's temporary this too shall pass some of you here this morning right now today might be in a winter time of your soul you might be dealing with some depression you might be dealing with something an oppression you might be dealing with a difficult some difficulty that seems to be weighing in on you pressing in on you what i want you to remember is this too shall pass this two shall pass stand strong and stable right where you are also recognize this some people around you are in summer if you're in winter and you're feeling the weight of the world on you you're feeling the harshness of a situation you're feeling the difficulty and then mr and miss summer comes along hey how you doing you know, they're just all dope, you know, like their feet are in the sand and they're running in the beach and they're going like, what's wrong with you? I mean, you, don't you have faith? I mean, oh, Jesus has it all. He's got it all. Square. You know, then their soul, they're just, you know, everything is just how they want it to be. It's a wonderful, wonderful day at the beach. Hey, you know what? Don't be offended because you're going to get a summer too, okay? You're going to have a summer of the soul. Don't be offended. They don't mean wrong. They're just, they just don't understand you're in winter. You're in winter. At this point, you're, you can't, you're not in a celebration mode. You're in a very inward place. You know, and winter is normal. You know, some people like to think that if you ever have a bad day, you must not be a good Christian. I dare you to read biographies or autobiographies of, of these great people over time who have lived and followed Christ. And I'm going to tell you, there isn't a great person, someone who's done great things for God that has not gone through winters of the soul. Every one of them have. Now, some of it, you know, some people's personalities are more geared toward winter and some people's personalities are more geared, but everybody has some winters of the soul. You know, Mother Teresa who's just, you know, you have to look at her and go, what have I done in life? You know, what did I do? What have I done? I've done nothing in comparison to what she, you know, she accomplished so much good. And there was a season in her life when she never heard God's voice. And I don't mean audibly. I'm just meaning in her own spirit, in that soul. She was in a winter of the soul, and it lasted a good long time for her. Hard, hard time. But let me tell you, winter is normal. Winter is normal. We like for it to end, but it is normal. I would say use winter to work on your soul, to read, to reflect, to pray, to really allow God's spirit to do something internally. It may not be visible to anybody else, but allow him to do something internally. Some of the hardest things that I've been through in my life, and I, I can promise you, you never find me on any given day going, hey God, you know that hard thing I went through? Could you just take me through another one like that sometime soon? I don't, I never volunteer for hard, for, for winter, for hard times. I never volunteer for it, but somehow, somehow I still get picked for it sometimes. And, and so the winter comes and you go through and, 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 but one of the things that I have found is I generally come out on the other side of winter, knowing something about God I would never have known if I hadn't gone through that winter. And you say, well, Rod, does that make you want more winters? No, it doesn't. I, I like to know more about God, but I, I, I want him to reveal himself to me in other ways, you know. Can we do a summertime getting better acquainted with God? You know, I, I, the winters are hard. They're tough. How to walk well through spring. It's a little easier because newness. Oh, I have a new vision. I have a new plan. I have a new hope. I've got new energy. Growth is visual. 
just look at what all good is going on in my life right now. It's awesome. Excitement and joy are normal in spring. I don't think I have to focus too much on how to walk well through that, except to remember to sometimes use the throttle, you know, in that sense of just, just you know, have all that newness, that stuff, but then channel it in a way that's, that's actually productive. How to walk well through summer. You know, this one right here, I will tell you, if you're in summer, it is fun. It's fun. It's just fun to be in summer. I mean, you're, you know, if, you, if you've ever been weighed down, summer's just like the opposite of that. In your soul, it's light. It's feathery. Your, your spirit is just like, you know, you don't, you don't really feel worried about your money. You don't feel worried about your kids. You know, you're just, it's things, if things were going better, you'd be in heaven, you know? I mean, it's just awesome. It's, it's, it's a great place. So when the summer's on, singing is normal. You know, you just go around singing. You'd be driving down the road. You hear yourself singing going, why am I singing? But hey, it's just life is good. Life is so good. And, and the, here's the thing I need to tell you about summer. When you're in a place of summer, just remember not everybody around you is in summer. And I don't mean that to like rain on your party, but be aware of that, that not everybody around you. Life is good. Things seem easy. It just works out for you. I just like it, just like falling off a log. We tend to think we're more spiritual in the summer. I love Jesus. Amen, brother. You know, no. And if you look at him, then something's wrong with you. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm so spiritual because I just feel so close to God. It's like God's hearing all my prayers. Everything's going well. Everything's, that's a great thing. There's nothing wrong with that. There's, it's a great place. We just remember, you're really not any more spiritual in that summertime than you are in the wintertime when you feel depressed. Isn't it funny how we allow our emotions or the seasons to define whether we're spiritual or not? See, we're going to, everyone is going to experience winter. Everyone's going to experience spring and summer and fall. The question is, where are you standing? Because if you're still standing there as a tree, and I don't care if there's not a leaf on you. And I don't care if it looks like nothing's going positively for you. You're still close to God. In fact, you might even be closer to him than you think you are in all of your little joyful jitter. You know, if you've ever worked near somebody who's a whistler, I don't know whether that means they're in summer or not, because sometimes people just whistle because they whistle, and that's, they think they're good at it, or they don't even, they're subconscious, they don't know. But, you know, people who like that can get on your nerves. So remember, if you're in one of these jubilant summer times, God is good all the time. Oh, all the time, God is good. You know, you just, up to everybody. My brother, uh, Randy, who's had the heart transplant, he's pastors in North Charlotte, he, uh, he called me the other day. He goes, I know you would appreciate this or whatever. And uh, he said he, he'd stopped by McDonald's. I guess he's trying to get another heart attack or something. I don't know what his, why he's going to McDonald's. But anyway, he stopped by McDonald's one morning. He was coming out, and he said there were these two guys walking toward him. And when behind each other, he said the first one said, well, praise the Lord, brother. Well, if you know Randy and you guys that were here, you know he's a bit of a cut-up and a clown anyway. And so he's not ever going to be outdone. And so he goes, but this guy said, well, praise the Lord. And he went, well, hallelujah, brother. Right back at him. And then the guy behind him said something else. And I was like, and he goes, I just knew if you could be here and watch this. He said, I knew you would be going, Randy, what are you doing out here? You know, having this. But, but he, he wasn't going to just let them, he wasn't going to let their summer not get summered back, you know, or whatever. And so it was just, just one of those moments. But there are people that think sometimes if you're not ready, if you happen to be walking outside walking, they said, well, hallelujah, brother, praise the Lord, and you just look at them like they'd lost their marbles, they'd probably go, man, that person doesn't seem to know God very much. It isn't about that. It's just a lot of that's our emotions or how we feel or we are. The question is, where are you standing? Where are you rooted? When summertime, we feel up, we feel happy, the sun's shining. Now, how to walk well through fall. It's a time of transition. It's a time when things are beginning to change. Sometimes we feel a great sense of satisfaction in fall. Maybe we had a good spring, a good summer. We feel like that worked out well for us. We can rest back after harvest. We've done some things. We've accomplished some things. Sort of settle into uh, the mode toward Thanksgiving in our lives. Um, enjoy the scenery. Fall is a beautiful time enjoying the scenery around us. But also, there's something else about fall. Fall's 
preparing us for winter. So sometimes we feel a little bit of a hesitation or a brace and it's going, oh, it's beautiful here. But winter's coming. Winter's coming. So we kind of have that pushback a little bit about where it's coming next, a little tension, a little difficulty there. I want to ask you to do this for me as we close. Identify within yourself what season you're in right now, um, today. It might change later in the week, but today, are you in winter? If you are, here's what I want to tell you. If you're in the right location, taking in the right nutrition, knowing who you are in Christ, you are strong and you are stable and you are in the right place. Maybe a hard place, maybe a tough place. It may be a depressing place, but you're in the right place. If you're in spring, I want to remind you, it's an opportunity to advance to take some steps forward, to advance, to move in the right direction, to move in some new directions, to take some new territory. It's an opportunity. Take that opportunity. If you're in summer, enjoy yourself. Just don't be a pain in the neck to everybody else. You know, now Go ahead, have a lot of fun, enjoy yourself. And, 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 but remember, everybody's not in summer. If you're in fall, be aware of where you've been, what's been done, and where you're going. And realize that just ahead of you, maybe a trial or two, you'd prefer to avoid. But just as God is with you in the summer and in the spring, he'll be with you in the winter when it comes. Let's pray.